readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars. Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome back to, or for the very first time to the channel, I am Will and this is my brother Ed. And today we are bringing to the table a book haul. Because we're book collectors, I always say that book buying and book reading are two entirely different hobbies. And we're about to prove it today because we've got a lot of books, many which we've already read and loved. Uh, but we want another edition and many that we're really looking forward to reading and fingers crossed we do manage to get to them to uh, abate the dreaded yeah. towering TBR pile and also the overflowing bookshelves. What you see in the videos is the neatest part of the shelves. You don't see the stacks around the room. Uh, but anyway, that's enough of me yapping on. Let's get into the actual book haul. Well, we, I mean, we love physical books. There's nothing quite like having that smell, having that feeling of a physical book, seeing what it looks like in your shelf when you it's finally true. put them all up together. So, yeah, that's a huge part of why we love this. But we've also got some Kindle reads on there as well. But the first yes. one for both of us is actually... P.L. Stewart, the awesome P.L. Stewart, sent us his first book, A Drowned Kingdom. Uh, and this is a self-pub book that he's written. We love chatting with him and Taylor we at really Made did. Between the Pages. It was such a fun live discussion. Go check it out here. Um, and yeah, P.L. is just a guy we get on with straight away. He's always so kind, so genuine. I mean, he loves Papa Gwyn as well, so he's already in our good Already book. got a bonus. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And he's got an awesome beard <laughs> as well. So yeah, and we cannot wait to read these. We've heard some great, great, great things about this series. Uh, and we can't wait to actually get to it. We've, it's been on yeah. our TBRs for a quite a while. Well now, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's so kind of, and we expressed interest saying, oh, we're looking forward to reading A Drowned yeah. Kingdom. And then he sent us signed copies, yeah. which is so kind of him. Cannot wait to read it. And also, um, I believe that he is going to be starting a YouTube channel soon. So he's got very insightful thoughts on books. So yeah, oh, yeah. do keep it. You an can eye tell he's read so, that. so much. And he's always got these really, really interesting thoughts and yeah. opinions on books as well. And he picks out, well, just in our conversation alone, he was picking out things that, you know, we were looking for as well in books. So he, we've definitely got similar taste so yeah thank you pl we really appreciate this and can't wait to read it can't wait to read a drowned kingdom and what do you have next up ed well the next one for me was the judas blossom i'm just happy that this is a limited proof uh edition and this is for the judas blossom by stephen orion which is coming out in the next few months isn't it and we have read it we have recorded a review of it so we will be putting that on the channel closer to the time when the embargo has been lifted for yes. us reviewers. But uh, hope, I mean, hopefully you might be seeing a quote from us somewhere. So yeah, Fingers keep, crossed. keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, and it'd be safe to say, obviously we can't do a review, but we enjoyed it. Yeah, we enjoyed it. And even though I've got an arc of it, I'm still going to be getting a normal standard edition. So. Oh, you just have to, don't yeah. you? You've got to have them next to each other. Mm -hmm. And next up, I have Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Uh, so this is very famed. I think it's sci-fi. Um, I heard Daniel Green talk about it once as kind of uh, a recommendation for those getting into sci-fi, if you're a bit more familiar with YA. But um, a patron of ours, Ohio Ed, um, has kindly... Re I'm just blown away, as you can tell. I'm lost for words. Just sent a signed copy to me, which absolutely just blows me away. Thank you, Ohio Ed, uh, for all of your support for the channel. Love talking about books with you, and I cannot wait to read Sai. I'm adding it to the pile, and it's taking a pride spot on at the bookshelf. So, as I said, thank you so much. And it came with an awesome letter uh, that says Sir William. So, how cool is that? You can't get much better than that. And so, yeah, as I said, blown away. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading Scythe and another book to the collection. Very nice. Uh, Ohio Ed is awesome. Great name too. It's true. And the next one is The Earth is Weeping by uh, P Peter Cousins. Uh, and this is a non-fiction book, much akin to Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, that kind of uh, of non-fiction writing where it's talking about the relationship between uh, white Anglo-European settlers and the Native Americans who already uh, inhibit the Americas. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I love, you know, this kind of period of, ha of, of history. I find it fascinating, so I can't wait to read even more. Very nice, Ed. And I have the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. And so this is known as kind of... Um, an integral Chinese text, and it's uh, about the period of history of the Three Kingdoms, the fall of the Han Dynasty, and the conflict that ensued afterwards. And this is not an authentic representation of the war. A lot of propaganda, a lot of myths and legends propagated in this tale. But 
we grew up on Dynasty Warriors, just like Alan said that he loves it, and uh, we do as well. Yeah. And uh, Alad Alexandria, that is that his first name is Library, isn't it? Yeah, I'm surname Alan. Yeah, Middle um, Alexandria of yeah, exactly. And so yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this, getting a bit more of the backdrop. Uh, obviously, as I said, it's not authentic to the actual conflict, but it's interesting seeing kind of the ideas that are propagated, uh, kind of people who are mythologized and uh, so on and so forth. It's just really interesting. I've read a bit about the actual history and it'd be uh, it'd be really cool kind of comparing and contrasting the two, see what has changed and what was left the same. And so yeah, that's another book added to the collection and I do love the Penguin Classics, especially when they're next to each other. They do look satisfying they look smart. on oh, the yeah. bookshelf. How can you watch Philip and Murphy's discussions on the Vinland Saga without wanting to jump on the bandwagon nice. yourself? Jump on the Drakkar ship, should I say. Very nice, uh, Ed. Yeah. Um, and I know that Mike Book Reviews has read this and he's even going diving into manga a little bit more as well. So uh, I've heard amazing things about Vinland Saga. As a Viking reenactor myself, I'm sure I will absolutely love it. Having read... Um, the sagas, the Icelandic sagas and many, many more Old Norse style texts uh, and period pieces as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like because I feel like I have quite a good grasp of, you know, the kind of the way, the, the sense of humour, the style of writing of the sagas. And I'm sure this will hold up. Very nice. Great things. Yeah, I'm sure. I think you're being a bit modest as well. Ed. You're a bit of a, um, a history buff in the period, aren't you? Uh, an amateur. An amateur. <laughs> well, an amateur means something very different to you than it does to most people. But anyway, next up, uh, enough of complimenting Ed. Um, next up, I have The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince. And this is by Robin Hobb. And it is an in not an introduction. It's another instalment in kind of the realm of the Eldlings uh, mythology. So it doesn't fit directly into the main series. But it's kind of like a spin-off. And as you can see, it's pretty small. So I think it is labelled as a novella. And I'm I have really a question. Looking... Do you know what a piebald is? It's a horse. Well, it's a certain colouring of a horse. Ah, uh, this is where I'm going to get mixed up. Is it two colours, white and black? Well done. Yes. Oh, what's, what's did you see the sweat? Oh, you had to go too far, <laughs> didn't you? What is it? In, Amer in, in the UK, we say skewballed. Skewballed. That's yeah. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Is it different in America? Yeah. What is it in America? I think Pinto means multicoloured. You've got Tobiano. Oh, is that kind of a broader term? Yeah, Tobiano, uh, Avero. Those kind of things. Well, see, this is why you should watch The Brothers Gwyn, because not only do we talk about books, we get an education on... I mean, I, I just made it up on the spot, so, yeah, don't worry. It sounded pretty cool. No, it sounded know. pretty good. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading. There's a bit more depth to the world and the mythologies. And, yeah, I absolutely love Robin Hobb's writing, and I'm going to be diving into the realm of the Eldlings again very, very soon. I don't know why I've suddenly just started talking really fast. And it's obviously excitement of talking yeah. about Ram and the Eldlings. But yeah, that is the uh, Willful Princess and the Pine Bald Prince. You don't look like a rapper, the, the, so... A rapper, yeah. yeah. Not quite. No. And the Broken Binding are killing it with their First Law editions. Uh, sadly, I missed out on the First Law trilogy. I haven't managed to acquire myself the first three but I do have Best Served Cold and Approaching the Heroes and Red Country, which would be nice. absolutely awesome as well. I love this edition. It's a beautiful edition. Um, I actually picked up a hardcover of Best Served Cold from a car boot sale a couple of years ago, but it's all very tatty. The pages look like they've been smoking because um, they're all yellow and a bit grim. So it's been good to get this copy and it smells delightful fresh, fresh from the printers it's fresh from the there's not I think I saw actually Daniel Green did a um, <laughs> comment today saying I'm just saying it's normal to sniff books oh it yeah it is it is, it is. Absolutely not is. in the way you just did I don't think really but what to do you sniff mean? a book up what out it, it was the eye rolling that did it for that me that was just a byproduct of the sniffing the side effect Moving swiftly on, I have Mayflies. And so this was recently adapted into a two-part series, so two episodes. Um, I think that's just called a two-part series, yeah. Um, and it is very and different. Both, um, yeah. And <laughs> you. Um, Ed worry. was just going to mock me, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so this is something very different from what I usually read. So it's contemporary fiction. It's about a group of boys who, when they're 17, 18, they go to a festival um, and some gigs and to artists who are very important to their kind of formative years and their childhood um, and the time they spend together. And then we jump 20, 30 years into the future and uh, one of these, there's two main friends and there's a few others. One of the main two, he's got some news for the other one. And there was a recent adaptation which was beautiful. It made me cry a lot. Um, and so I thought, I have to read the book. I immediately bought this 
picked it up, and I've already read it. Sorry, Ed. Um, and I, it's a beautiful, poignant, thought-provoking book that is so insightful into like the human condition um, and the impacts of kind of just living and the bond of friendship as well. And it does all of this without feeling pretentious. It's like almost a philosophical edge that's what i love in books when there's an edge to it which makes it philosophical philosophical and thought-provoking when it's sometimes at the center it can be a bit heavy can't it and take you away from the story but this certainly didn't do that for me it really just immersed me in the story and highlighted the points of what this is about and yeah about this uh, story of friendship which really drives the entire tale and so yeah beautiful story i'd recommend to everybody even if you don't really read books like this even if you're mainly a fantasy reader like me i'd definitely uh, recommend this as a palate cleanser and the next one for me is God Killer by Hannah Craner. This is uh, a book that's taken, well, bookshelves by storm, really. Uh, and I, I've heard such good things about it, mainly from Nils at Nils Reviews. It, our good friend. Go check out her TikTok, which is brilliant for fantasy recommendations. And her um, Instagram. Um, and her Instagram. Her well. Lord of the Rings memes on Sunday. Yeah, Every Sunday, Sunday. Just It's just... It's, it's a good day, isn't it? It's a great morning. It is it's a great, a great morning. way to wake up with some Lord of the Rings memes. And Neil's been doing it for about two years now. Yeah. I think actually since before lockdown. It's a gift so. to the book uh, community. She is the gift that keeps giving. And God Killer uh, sounds absolutely awesome. I know that Elliot Brooks recently did a review and she really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to this. It's a lovely edition. I love it when hardbacks feel like this. They feel mm. almost like velvet, almost smooth. Almost smooth. Yeah, like if I, not I feel like I could scratch it and you could see... The marks, like it's just like it, you know. Do you like that? Yeah, I like it. Can I feel it? Um... <laughs> oh, I get what you mean. Actually, we should yeah. do an ASMR channel, really. We should really, shouldn't we? You, you do seem like that's quite up your street. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Nothing at all. I don't uh, know if that's an insult. Or no, no, it's a compliment. It's just your passion. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay, so... we're not saying ASMR is my passion. No, but no, um, kind that. of. No, let's just stop. Textures. Textures. That's it. See what I hate? Um, pottery. That hasn't been glazed. Does that make anyone's teeth go funny? No. Or is that... I don't know. Yeah, we don't buy that in my house. It's exiled. Do you have a list? Do you not have a texture that you don't like? Green food. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> you can carry on. Green food. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah what Ed talked about is that Best Self Cards Special Edition. I'm going to be talking about that first. Uh, not first. He beat me to I that. Spoke about it and I'm going to be talking about it second. Um, right. And so, I yeah. macheted the path. You macheted the path for me. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, seeing the whole set together when the heroes in my country that. I said is that. here. Am, you I, get, not, you am I not allowed to say that as well? No, no, go well, for it. I'm just going to let you know what I said. I guess um, I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> I guess I'm not allowed to say that I loved it because yeah, I said that. I also yeah, loved I it. Say yeah. That. Book. The next one for me is House Made of Dawn by N. Scott Mummaday, and uh, this he is a Native American writer. Um, and this book, I haven't really heard too much about it. I just saw it on a Goodreads list of things to read if you liked Louise Erdich, and I thought I would check this out. But is I think essentially it's the story of a Native American man, young man, um, who comes back from a foreign war, and he is kind of I think he's kind of PTSD, and he is in between two worlds. Um, and he's kind of living this very strange life and it's just, it's a little bit like a dreamland kind of thing so I think it's going to be obviously quite a a bit of a Neil Gaiman-esque kind of book I think quite whimsical but also quite poignant at the same time very nice Ed that sounds pretty cool yeah I, know. Street as I don't well. really know what, what to expect but, but I imagine you got it I'm because just, it yeah. sounds like a book that you will love yeah um, and next I have The Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. I was very lucky and so was there to be given early access through NetGalley Orbit just kill it they, they do even All the, the designs aside just it's beautiful pretty yeah. beautiful love it um, and yes it's just pretty awesome and this is the second instalment in the just carry on just reading Okay, so uh, that terrified me. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, the second <laughs> instalment of uh, the Empire of the Wolf trilogy. Yeah. Book three is not out yet, but book two is. And so, yeah, do go and get this and book one, which is the Justice of Kings right there. And so, yeah, we did a review for it if you want to check out our more insightful thoughts. But yes, I had to go get this hardback and put it next to book one because, as Ed said and pointed out very well, they're beautiful covers. And yeah, it's a great story within as well. So, yeah, it's got all points on there, doesn't it? And yeah, that's another book added to the bookshelves. I've been trying to find a copy of Aztec by Gary Jennings for it's it's about a couple of years now. I've been trying to find a nice hardback, um, and I eventually found one on Amazon. And the cover's a little bit ripped, but I absolutely love it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful, um, and I cannot wait to read it. This is a historical fiction. Is it Behemoth? 
A behemoth. 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 But now he said, now I, when you actually say it, it doesn't sound right, does yeah, it? Yeah, it's a behemoth. Um, and it is meant to be phenomenal. I've heard that Gary Jennings is a fantastic writer and Aztec is the best that he has ever done. It's a little bit like, say, Shogun, but set in uh, the Americas in Mexico. In the um, themes or during, just how it's kind of seen as kind of the pinnacle? I think pinnacle. that kind of writing. Okay, um, cool. It's also like the pinnacle. But also I think it's about... Um, a man going to live in that kind of community as well. Right, so, okay, yeah. yeah, in that culture. So I'm yeah. looking forward to reading it. I'm definitely going to read it in the next couple of months because I just can't wait, but it is a beast of a book. That uh, is pretty true. So, yeah. Handy as a weapon if uh, an intruder suddenly runs in. Forget all the swords we've got around the house. I dare them. You'll use Aztec. No, I don't dare them, actually. Don't, don't dare, do dare them. Do uh, next up is some non fiction is uh, The Bronze Age Greek Warrior 1600 to 1100 BC. And that's about all to say about that. It's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Osprey, Osprey is a great way to start, especially if you're writing or you want to know a bit more about historical period. You know, if you're reading Dream the Eagle, go check out the Osprey Boudicca Revolt edition uh, after you've read it, of course, because it just or or even look at the pictures because it just puts you in that mm. frame of mind of that culture. Do you have it? Um, I I do actually, yeah, I do. I may have to borrow that. I used to collect these models, borrow. and they would come along with Osprey editions. So That's I've cool. been reading Osprey since I was like six. Yeah, oh, I couldn't understand why they said, but um, you saw the pictures. But uh, yeah, Dad used cool to give these awesome models whenever we went by the shop in Polgate or something. Very nice. Yeah, uh, right. But anyway, yeah, that's some non-fiction and yeah, doing a bit of research into this. Uh, militarization of the Greek warrior and the evolution over time. So pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Is that research for your book? Uh, yes, it is. Nice. Which, hope, well, most things don't actually become books, do they? It'd just be me reading more and more. Books are made out of books. And as Cormac McCarthy said, thoughts. And thought. And motivation. That is. And time. Um, the next one for me is The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee. This is another non fiction tale uh, talking about Native Americans, how their lives, how the cultures have. Um, have fared, have you know survived the since wounded knee, and how um, what kind of happened has happened in terms of events of history since wounded knee in 1890. Um, so I've been really looking forward to reading this as well. It's a lovely, lovely edition, um, but it is about the Native Americans' lives from 1890 up until now. So I thought it's really important that you also have kind of a current um, current understanding of modern day affairs really yeah. as well and see where it's gone because I've read so much in that period of history of the 19th century, 18th century 17th century um, in the Americas, it's really important that you kind of realise what has happened since then as well and what state of you know people are living in nowadays. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. I'm looking forward to reading that one. Kind of the breadth and evolution over time up to the present day. Very yeah. important. Um, and next up I have The Sandman uh, Book 2 which contains I believe Volume 4 and 5 and so uh, my friend Max very kindly bought me book one for my birthday and I blitzed through it. I love them. Um, the first three volumes which I embedded with them, book one, all brilliant. I love how... Um, so I did commit sacrilege on watching the adaptation first, but I think that's, that's all right. Um, but I absolutely loved the volumes. They're very true. Well, the adaptation was very true to the root material, but the root material is somehow even weirder and stranger and even more creative, which I absolutely adored. I love just looking at that and seeing an insight into Neil Gaiman's mind. What a genius he is to come up with these ideas. It's really exceptional and I felt utterly immersed. It had been about a year since I last read a graphic novel, so it was great, a bit great to immerse myself in another one again. And so, yeah, I'm feeling the hype. I want to delve back into graphic novels and how better good way to go. than to follow with book two of The Sandman. Undoubtedly. Especially when there's news um, for season two of Sandman. Should be brilliant. Ooh, he's got a great voice, that guy, Morpheus, doesn't he? He does. Wonderful voice. He does. And the next one for me is This House of Sky by Ivan Doig. Um, and I don't know anything about this book apart from it's kind of a love letter to the landscape of the West. Um, as well as the Western mindset as well. So um, it's a book which is what well, Ivan Doig, uh, the author, grew up um, in the kind of wilderness of Montana, Montana, and he is you know writing about his kind of life, you know, in terms of um, shepherders and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, just writing about the landscape, how the world has changed as well, and what he used to live in, what life used to be like. And I just find that really interesting. I find it fascinating. Um, and it is, I, I, I think it is a fiction, so kind of, you know, relaying his own experiences, but through his uh, through a new story as well. Um, and seeing how, you know, the land has shaped him as a person, as well as other people, and continues to do so. Very nice, Ed. All these books, I say it all the time. Ed, when you talk about it, I'm like, I'm going to add that to my team. I'm going to make a tally. Make you a tally. should make a tally. But... 
It should be a reward rather than punishment, shouldn't it? It's like a Optimism reward. of how many can be in the TBR. Who says that? It's like a reward. Just it's in Django, that Django Unchained. Django. Um, anyway, next I have the Judas Blossom, which Ed talked about earlier. Am I allowed to speak about this one? Uh, yeah, it's a nice cover. It's yeah, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, this is by Stephen Ryan, which I've read this, and I can't say much because of the review embargo, but I loved it. So that's Wicked. all we can say for now. Uh, but keep your eyes peeled on the channel. We'll be talking about it a lot in the future, up to release, which I believe is the 11th of... Is it July or June? June, I think. Yeah, we'll probably say in the back. No, July. July. Yeah, it says in the back. Nice. I was just luring you into a trap properly yeah, there yeah. Uh, to destroy your reputation. Uh, uh, but it's destroyed. Yeah, annihilated. Yeah, just like that. See? It takes, a that. Li- it takes a lifetime to craft a moment to destroy. From your brother. From my brother. But yeah. Me. My brother. Um, but anyway. Tongue twisters, eh? Uh, but the Judas Blossom absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to get the hardback edition or... Yeah when it comes out because it's a different cover again which is absolutely amazing Mm -hmm. and yeah it's a great book and here is a book that a subscriber Gary Bowl sent to me this is the first book that he has written and it's called Traitorous Uh, and this is a book set in the 17th century Oliver Cromwell is marching to Ireland well across Ireland um, and I don't know too much about that time period I know it's me um, I think it's the is it the Jacobite revolution that kind of era um, late, well, mid 17th century. Yeah. And, you know, this is historical fantasy set in Ireland, so I'm really looking forward to it. Gary's a great guy, great subscriber, always love seeing his comments. He's always got such similar taste to us as well, um, and I'm really looking forward to reading this at some point. It looks absolutely lovely on the shelves. I really like this this mm-hmm. cover. That's the kind of insignia of Ireland, really, isn't it? And it's dripping in blood, which speaks of Pretty symbolic to come. And I don't know too much about Oliver Cromwell. I kind of, I, I always, my historical love has always been the ancient world the Celtic Age, you know, the Viking Age, the Medieval Age, and then once it gets to, you know, the B- Battle of Bosworth and the Battle of Stoke afterwards, you put uh, the then down. I'm just like, that'll do. Um, I did like Blackadder, the Tudor series, though, actually, so that's pretty... Well, well you should love anything I've got in that period, then. Oliver Cromwell, so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this and, uh, and maybe learning as well as loving the history. Very nice. And I think you've actually talked about this already, this video, the book that wouldn't burn. I haven't. No, awesome. Well, finally, one that I talk about first. Yeah. Uh, the I bit... have a little dub there. Thank you. The book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. We're very lucky to uh, be sent early art copies. And so, Mark thank Lawrence, you, thank Mark. you so much yeah. for making them available for us. Uh, cannot wait to read this. And we will definitely have a review up on the channel. And if you can't tell, I'm a fan of Mark Lawrence's writing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you should be as well. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah, That's I've got a good prize spot there. Wow. Nice. Pretty nice. Yeah, pretty cool. I like uh, but yeah, so I'm When's really the looking next, for uh, King of Thorns coming out. Uh, I'm not sure. I think talks may be currently ongoing. I don't know, nice. but nothing is confirmed. Okay. Uh, do you mean next in the Broken Empire? Yeah, the King, King, of, King of Thorns. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's Emperor of Thorns, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. last one. Uh, but anyway, Mark Lawrence, thank you so much for this. I cannot wait to read it. And as I said, we'll have a review on the channel at some point. And yeah, this will be added to my prize Mark Lawrence collection. Mm-hmm. And you guys might have seen me talk about this on the channel already because I have already read this one. And it is called In the Rogue Blood by James Carlos Blake. This is a book that's very hard to sum up, but if you want to read a book that's basically a cousin to Blood Meridian or a companion novel maybe, uh, then check this out. It is way more blunt in terms of the violence, the aggression and the brutality of the time period. Uh, it is way more in your face. It is not delivered as maybe as beautifully as Kant McCarthy can put his writing but it is effective nevertheless and uh, it is a book that really ma- leaves a lasting impression. There's lots of aspects of this that I have that are making me think of it and, you know, as after I've read it, which uh, is staying with me. It's quite haunting as well, but it is pretty horrific. And when I say pretty horrific, probably the most horrific book I've actually read in terms of the violence and just the horrible stuff that goes on inside the pages. Um, but what's even more harrowing is that this stuff really did happen and it was commonplace in the Americas. Um, but James Carlos Blake is a very gifted writer. He has a way of turning a phrase. He has, you know, the dialogue is absolutely top notch. Um, and the way he crafts characters as well, it is essentially the story of two brothers um, called John and Edward, and they are not averse to violence, to violent ways. They're 
mid teenagers and it's the story um, of them kind of losing their way from their family and then they go head on down to Mexico and they get em- uh, embroiled in a variety of affairs on their way down there. So um, yeah, it's very, very interesting read. It's well worth checking out if you are if you are a diehard fan of Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. And my last one before I talk about my Kindle buys and adds to the li- library, Library? Uh, yes, uh, I have a book that um, a close friend of mine, Phoebe, very kindly bought me, and this is Lupin, uh, The Gentleman Thief. I believe there's a series. Actually, I think it actually says, yes, it's now a series on Netflix. And so this is kind of, from what I understand, kind of murder mystery, kind of criminal underworld, but uh, a bit lighter than that. And mm. um, I think it says that he's a rogue, not a villain. And I believe that Sherlock Holmes actually appears in a few of the stories, uh, but he gets outwitted by Lupin. So obviously a very clever intellectual who is kind of, um, as I said, a rogue, but not a villain. That's kind of the catch line, I think, for it. And I don't really know much more, but I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this. And it is another one to add to the collection. I'm looking forward to, of course, I have to read this before I watch the adaptation. I won't commit sacrilege again. Again. Again, exactly. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this. Something a bit different. I need to read more stories like this because most of what I watch is probably kind of crime. Um, And I love the Sherlock Holmes films as well. But for some reason, I don't read much. And so, yeah, hopefully this is going to be a segue into that and a bit more of reading that genre. Excellent. And the last one for me is a Kindle read sent by the author himself. It's sent by Jonathan Rhys Mayers. And he has written a book called Vevin Song, which is kind of a fantasy, uh, I think a fantasy kind of style horror book as well. So I am really, really interested in it. Uh, he's a great subscriber. I always love chatting to him on Twitter as well. So thank you, Jonathan, for sending me your book. And I look forward to reading it. I've heard some great things on Goodreads. Go check out the reviews. The cover is lovely as well. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to reading a bit more self-pub. You know, especially it's really great to support people, especially authors who have come out this year as well. You know, current Mm. authors as well. So, yeah, thank you for sending that to me. And I really look forward to reading it. Very nice. And I'm going to be talking about the last books as well. This is on Kindle. Uh, So I got the Cicero Trilogy by Robert Harris. I'm holding it upside down uh, by Robert Harris uh, because Library of Alexandria has been hosting a read along. And so, yeah, I've read the first two installments, or actually I'm near the end of the second installment. Probably would have finished by the time this video is out. And loving it, I think it's beautifully written, very well crafted, very clever and intricate and plot driven uh, with brilliant, uh, memorable characters as well. And then I've got that, and then I've also purchased Unsold and read that as well, nice. uh, which is by Will White, and the first installment in the Cradle series. And so, yeah, I may be reading maybe one every other month or one a month. I'm not sure. I'll see how it goes. But I've read two installments now and thoroughly enjoyed them. And so that's great. And, yeah, I did need to get a Kindle and buy some books in there to kind of hold back the swathe of books. And so I'm yeah. buying my favourites. So, of course, Especially I read... Especially when you've got a library and, you, you know... That's... When you haven't got too much space, I really don't. It fills up quick. It does, it really does. And so, yeah, obviously, when I read Tyranny of Faith through NetGalley on the Kindle, I was like, this is pretty awesome, so I'm going to get it. And so, yeah, that's why you saw Tyranny of Faith earlier. But, yeah, that is my Kindle buys. Thank you so much for watching our book haul. We're going to do a book haul probably every three months or so. That gives us enough time to, you know, wrap up enough enough books ready for this and uh, and hopefully show them off to you guys. Thank you so much to the authors and the publishers who have sent us books as well to read. We're so and grateful. The and the patrons, of course, as well. Thank you to the patrons for sending us awesome, awesome books. Uh, it's so kind of you guys, and we really appreciate it. And we look forward to reading all of these books. Uh, some we've read already. We're lucky enough, haven't we? But yes. others, we are looking forward to putting them in the TBR and hopefully featuring them on the channel mm-hmm. in, in, over the next few months. But you'll, you know, keep your eyes peeled for another book haul up in June. Yes, it's the book lovers' curse, isn't it? It's a gift and a curse. So many books to love, uh, but we can't get to them all. It's just but another we will, joy. It's we just will another try joy. our best. Yeah. We will yeah. do our very best. But everyone, thank you so much for watching. As Ed said, we are the Brothers Grin. I'm Will. This is my brother Ed. Thank you for watching Truth and Courage. Truth and Courage from the Brothers Gwyn. Thank you.